Hi everybody, um, then welcome back to my channel. So the last four videos I talked about how I built the Wallapini itself. And in this video I wanted to discuss the garden beds, how I built the wicking beds. And um, at the end of the video I want to discuss things that maybe didn't work so well in the Wallapini. And why and what to do about that. So sit back and enjoy. This is the making of my self wicking beds. I put a little bit of dirt down there just to uh, smooth out the sharpness of the gravel. And then I'm putting a liner in there, pond liner. Uh, it only needs to go up to that first rung, but you know, excess is fine. And then we'll put gravel. Uh, first, I'm gonna put these irrigation tubes in there full of holes just show you later what i do there so the first 10 or 12 inches of the wicking bed is the water reservoir and here i put four inch drain uh, pipes that are perforated and then covered that with gravel and on top of that you put um, outlet these little outlet tubes and then ground uh, cover and then you just uh, start loading up the soil on top of that and then get to planting. The first couple of weeks you will have to top water until the bottom water starts wicking up. After that you just top off the reservoir through those PVC pipes that, that you see in the corner of each of the boxes. And you only have to do that every five to seven days. A couple other advantages are that you have almost no weeds because you're not top watering. And because the roots go deep, this is actually quite ideal for growing root vegetables. A further proof of concept came when one of the beds that I'd planted carrots in had a leak and didn't hold much water in the reservoir. As you see right here, look at the size of those carrots compared to the carrots that grew in the bed that was working properly. In the second year, I experimented with a no water bed. Um, as you see here, I just filled it halfway with wood chips and then soaked it really well. And then on top of that, just put soil and planted squash. And man, that squash just took off. It uh, I had to keep cutting it back because it was taking over the wallopini. Other than those two types of beds, I have plants in pots, and then I experimented with a hanging tomato plant, which was a total disaster. Speaking of challenges, I want to take you back to that squash plant that threatened to take over the wallopini. So I got a lot of foliage on that, but the little baby uh, squashes kept shriveling up until I discovered that because you don't get pollinators flying into the wallopini, you have to transfer the pollen from the male to the female flower. And once I did that, I got little squashes. The same hand pollination applied to the cucumbers and also to the other patty pan squashes. For other problems, I had the help of natural predators like froggies and spiders. In this two year experiment so far, I've gotten peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, all kinds of uh, root vegetables, strawberries, and sweet potatoes. I must say, I was expecting to get a lot more sweet potatoes out of this bed. Uh, what do you do with an abundance of sweet potato leaves? You chop them up and you throw them into curry. What do you do when nasturtium takes over? You throw the leaves and the flowers into salads, and when there's still too much, you make pesto out of it. Finally, one of my favorite plants in the Wallapini has been kale. It has given us food all summer long and lasted almost through the winter. In parting, what do you do with all the dead leaves in the fall? Well, you make lovely prints with them. Hope you come back and watch the rest of the series. <laughs> 